Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on Living Hope, a weekly journey designed to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer, sharing the real-life stories of those really affected by this deadly disease and how they deal with it on a daily basis. With your host, this brings a smile into the conversation, even a serious one like today here, Roberta Luna. How are you smiling at us today here? I'm good, Paul. Thank you. I know it's a um, subject none of us really want to talk about, but it's something I feel very important. And, you know, as Ben Franklin was quoted as saying, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. I know death is it's a harsh reality that none of us really want to think about or even plan, regardless of what our health might be. But it's something that I think is really important for us to do. For one, it takes, you know, that burden off of our loved ones, and I think it just makes it easier for everybody. And today we have Allison Lee. She's an attorney at law, director, trust, and estate content for free will. Allison knows the importance of, of anybody of having to put your affairs in order, so to say, for her clients. And her experience with her mother's diagnosis of pancreatic cancer, I think, brought it even more personal to her, and she has this deep conviction that she wants to help others to get through this difficult time. Thank you, Allison, for joining us. And like I said, I know this is a rough subject, but I really think it's important and I hope people will stay in tune with us and listen to this. Thank you for joining us today. Roberta, thank you so much for having me. Um, Thank you and, and thank you to your community as a lawyer and also as someone who lost a very dear member of my family to pancreatic cancer. Can you tell us a little bit if you're comfortable sharing your mom's journey with pancreatic cancer? Absolutely. Well, it was 19 months before May of 2012 when my mother woke up one morning and started itching. And we all thought that maybe it was uh, chicken pox or bed bugs or you know, we, we kept asking ourselves, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? Well, hindsight's 2020. We brought her into the doctor who examined her, looked at her eyes, which were jaundice, and started putting the pieces together. Not long after that, there were specialists brought in and more specialists. And it started the blur in our all of our heads. It just it all, you know, it all moved so fast. And then we had a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Over those 19 months, we learned more than we ever thought about family, about love, about what it was to have a mother in our life. And she had a procedure. She had the Whipple procedure. But even after that, the cancer was too aggressive. And ultimately, she passed away in May of 2012. I'm sorry. Um, I lost my mother as well to pancreatic cancer. So I understand, you know, our moms are so important to us. And no matter, I know I had, you know, my mom and I fought a lot, I think because we were so much alike, but you know, there was that deep bond as well. There's, you know, nobody like, like your mom, especially when you get sick, you know, no one takes care of you like your mom. So uh, for me, it's, you know, a big chunk that's missing in my life and I'm sure yours as well. And I'm sorry to hear that. Was your mom able to, did she do any chemo or anything or have any she kind did. of? Yes. Did... Yes, she did. She did chemo. And and yes, you said it best. Mothers, they're great for taking care of you and also, you know, for not seeing eye to eye on all matters. But she was incredible up till the end. There was nothing more important to her than her volunteer work in the community. She used to volunteer for the hospital for our wounded veterans. And one of the hardest things for her was when the doctor said she could no longer be in a hospital setting. And that was so hard for her because all she wanted to do was give back to the community and give back to our service members. She was just that type of person, always wanting to make the world a better place. And I'm sure she did. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit, you're with Free Will, is that what is that what the company, what it is called? I'm sorry. That's right. Free Will, we're a, a social good enterprise, and we create a platform for individuals to make their wills free of charge and other estate planning documents like powers of attorney, 
and advanced medical directives, healthcare, healthcare powers of attorney, and living wills. And these are, like I said, I know for my family, at least, it was something that we started after my dad also died of pancreatic cancer. And at that time, you know, we didn't talk about it because we weren't expecting it. It all happened so quickly. We didn't really know what he wanted. So learning from that experience with my mom, we decided to sit down ahead of time and kind of talk about it with her and ask her what it was that she wanted us to do in that case. And, you know, not just for when you get sick, but when you're healthy, that's probably the better time to do it is when you are healthy and, you know, get these things set out because it makes it so much easier. It was so much easier for us to know what my mom wanted. We didn't have to guess. Whereas my dad, we were like, well, I hope we're doing what he wanted. I hope we're doing the right thing. So what suggestion do you have for families? When is the best time? Like, I know there's never a good time, but when is the best time to sit down and talk about what do you want when that you know, when things start to come, you need to make these changes and these decisions. What yeah, is your... Roberta, you said it so well that the best time to take care of these conversations is when you're healthy. And then that leaves so much more room to just spend time with one another when it's time for these documents to really come to life. It was so helpful for us that my mom had taken that act of love for herself and also for her loved ones to put her plan in place. She had some special wishes when it came to her advanced medical directive and her wishes for the disposition of her body. She had values. She had faith-based preferences, and she was able to articulate them at a time when she was healthy so that there wasn't guesswork and that the plans had been made. And really, once the diagnosis was there, we could just focus on spending time with each other and not worried about you know, what what does she want? What should her, you know, what are her preferences for her medical care? What are her preferences for, for her assets? The instructions were there. The directions were clear. All that we needed to do was take care of each other in that moment. And I think that's really important because you want to spend all that time you have with them doing something, you know, together, not sitting down and planning their, you know, their funeral. So um, I think it's a good time. I've learned And I've actually got mine planned pretty well, (laughs) right down to the music I want, just what we're going to be doing. So it's something that I hope will take that heavy burden off of my, I have two sons that will take that heavy burden off of them and they can just look at my book and know what I want to do. And that's what they, they will do. What goes into planning? What are the components of it? I know you talked about the health directives and that kind of thing. What goes into planning? Absolutely. Well, as I said, the An estate plan includes a lot of different parts. There's the powers of attorney, which take care of lifetime decision-making. And then there's the last will and testament, which talks about the disposition of your assets after you're no longer here. And also who you want to serve in those important roles, like your executor, the, the person who's charged with overseeing the management of your estate, and also maybe guardians for your children. These are some weighty topics, but I'd say the first thing is just kind of thinking about the different pieces of an estate plan. And free will does try to lay that out very well, where we identify these are the roles that are going to need to be filled. These are the documents that you can prepare. And, you know, here's a way to list out your assets so that there's no guesswork for your executor when it comes time to administer your estate. If you can make the management of your estate as easy and orderly as possible. It's a great act of care for the people in your life that, you know, are going to be charged with with overseeing all of this and making sure your lasting wishes are carried out. I I muted myself because I had back (laughs) Oh, okay. We're like listen waiting for something to happen. I thought, okay, she's I I see her mouth moving, but I don't hear anything coming out here. (laughs) I'm so sorry. <laughs> that, that mute button, right? It just it gets you every time. <laughs> I was trying to keep the background noise out of the conversation. You kept all the noise out of the conversation, yeah. Especially <laughs> my, you, Roberta, come back. <laughs> my noise, right? I'm sorry. That's what you get for live, right? Here's what you get. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was asking to myself the difference between irrevocable wills and a revocable will. So do I have the term right? <laughs> Well, I will say that usually the difference there, revocable versus irrevocable, is usually in the context of living trusts. 
A will is something that only takes effect when you pass away. And so up until that point that you can no longer make decisions for yourself, a will is always going to be revocable, generally speaking. As far as trusts go, and that's a really great topic because one of the other features that free will does provide is we have a revocable living trust tool. Currently, it's for California residents, but stay tuned. This may be coming to you at a new jurisdiction very soon to get to the difference between something being revocable and something being irrevocable. When a trust is revocable, it's something that you can cancel or change or modify during your lifetime or from time to time. So I set up my trust today and my trust can function basically as the will substitute. So, or this type of trust can. So I I set up my trust and I say, I want to name my sister as my trustee. Well, when my son, who is now five years old, maybe reaches an age that eh, at least he can tie his shoe, I might want him to have a position of greater importance in my plan. And so the fact that I can revoke or change it from time to time is helpful because then maybe I change it in a couple of years and I name my son as the trustee and maybe my sister as the backup. Mm-hmm. And irrevocable trust, on the other hand, is something that is not easily changed. And that's because an irrevocable trust is generally set up for some tax planning. And so in order to achieve those tax benefits, can't have the ability to make all of those changes from time to time. Well, maybe you should explain, because obviously maybe I had it wrong, the difference between then estate planning and a will. Again, a great question. A will is part of an estate plan. An estate plan can have many pieces, and it takes into account the needs of the individual planner. Do they need some sort of tax planning? Are they worried about that? Currently, the federal state tax exemption is over $12 million, so it, it doesn't affect too many folks, including myself. But there are folks out there who do need to do tax planning, so they might have some trusts in addition to their will, in addition to their powers of attorney. But for many folks, a last will and testament is really the core of that estate plan. It takes care of the disposition of your assets. It takes care of the naming of individuals who are going to be overseeing, carrying out your lasting legacy and wishes. And you mentioned the power of attorney. Exactly what is the power of attorney? Again, a great question. Powers of attorney, I used to say, are the most important estate planning tools. I don't know if that's really true, but they are super important. These take care of lifetime decision-making. So just like I had said, a will only takes effect when you pass away. Powers of attorney help today. So let's say that, you know, I'm going along and unfortunately I fall ill. I Something happens and I can't manage my affairs today. I haven't passed on, but I can't attend to matters the way that I could before that illness. Well, it's really helpful if I have a power of attorney where I've named an agent who can step into my shoes and take over that decision making, whether it's dealing with my finances or just like in the medical context, making some decision making in accordance with my wishes. All of that is happening during my life. And that's where a power of attorney can be really, really helpful. Can you have like two power of attorneys, like somebody to do the financial part and someone else to take care of the healthcare parts of it? Absolutely, you can, and many folks do. The most important thing is choosing the agent that's right for the job. So if you have a close friend who's really great with finances, but maybe less savvy when it comes to to the medical decision making, then sure, name them as your agent under your power of attorney, and then stick somebody in as your healthcare agent who you think is going to respect your wishes and also be comfortable navigating in that space. And actually, to go a little back to my story, um, that's exactly what my mom did. She trusted my dad when it came to finances, but you know what? As I said, she had some clear wishes when it came to her medical decision making, and that included, you know, when it came to life sustaining measures. She didn't want to put my dad or her loved ones in a position to have to carry out wishes that she thought might be really difficult for him and them. So. She made the decision that was right for her. Just like you said, naming the agent that's right for the job, super important. Yeah, I think that would be the most difficult part, you know, is having to make that decision in the medical sense where maybe they're not able to make that decision anymore. So to have it actually spelled out 
I think was so helpful. At least it was for, you know, like I said, with my mom to know what she already wanted and not have to go back and forth and talk to the family and say, do we keep her on life support? Do we not keep, what do we, you know, what do we do? So to have that already spelled out. And again, like I said, I understand that this is a really difficult subject for people and, but it's just so important to please take care of this while you can and not wait until that last minute when you want to really spend all the time, you know, being with them and either talking or just hugging or whatever it is and not having to sit there and, you know, talk about such a, a heavy, dark subject. So I just really encourage everybody. And I feel a little flustered for some reason suddenly <laughs> and I'm talking about this, but I hope it's coming across clear that it's just with the best intentions and not any negativity at all. We're all, you know, we're here for whatever time we're here, but we are going to leave at some point. So it's good to have all this in order. That's um, absolutely right, Roberta. Thank you. And I mean, I think you're articulating it so well. Obviously, you've had experience with this and it's it's really resonating. And I agree, having your affairs in order, and it's something that everybody has to do. It's It's not only thinking in the context of one illness or you know, thinking that this is all, you know, this is all a, a dark, a dark space. Rather, if you're young, if you're healthy, as long as you're above 18, and you can put these documents in order, you should. I guess I made my first will when I had just, you know, I was young, I had just got married. And, you know, I thought I, I still thought I was young, and I was going to live forever. But I knew it was a good idea. I knew it was, I knew it was important. And it is, it's so very important. As you said, you know, this is an essential life task. And by planning in advance, you just have so much more time to, to do what matters, right? To spend time with your family, with your loved ones, and laughing and loving and hugging and, and being joyful together about the memories. Maybe we can talk a little bit what happens when you don't have a will, because I hear all kinds of horror stories on that end. So what happens when you don't have a will or a living trust? That's right. Without having a plan in place, it just becomes more difficult for your loved ones. First of all, there's there's probate, which is the court-supervised process of over, overseeing your estate. And with the will, you know, in some states, it's a little more challenging than others. But generally speaking, if you have a will or a revocable living trust, there are ingredients, there are directions to make the administration go more smoothly. Without those documents, first of all, state law is going to govern where your assets go, and that might not be what you intend. You might want to benefit a, a charity of choice. You might want to benefit some more remote members of your family who are very important to you. And that doesn't happen unless you say so, unless you put that in writing. And also the, the individuals who are going to carry out your wishes, you don't have a say in that. That ability to be empowered, you've lost that. So take the step and put your plan in place, and then you have a say in all this decision making. And as I said, and as Free Will tries to stress, if there are causes or there are organizations that you know have weighed on your heart or that you've supported in your life, leaving a, a bequest commitment to them can be a really great way to cement your lasting legacy. And my mom did that. Um, as I said, she volunteered a lot in her community, the hospital for veterans, and and she wanted them as part of her will. And she made that statement. She stood up and she, you know, through her will, was able to say how important those organizations were to her. So the best time if you wanted to make like a, a donation to a nonprofit or any organization, that is the best time is to put it in your your will, correct? Or does that go in your living trust? I'm sorry, I'm still a little trying to, I think... <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. It can go in either. It can be a bequest commitment in your will. It can be a distribution in your revocable living trust. Either way, it's a great way to cement your lasting legacy is to, to make a bequest commitment. In fact, you know, free will, we make our platform warm and intuitive because we want in 100% free because we want individuals to feel empowered to protect the people and the causes that matter most. And one way to do that, as I said, is you know, if there are charities in your life that have made a difference to you, consider speaking up with your estate plan and making them part of your lasting legacy. And anything you put in can always be 
changed at some time, right? It's not like it's not written in blood. You can't change anything if you decide you want to change your charity or increase the amount or decrease the amount. You can go back and do that as well, correct? That's correct. No wills in blood, not yet. We're moving towards electronic <laughs> wills in some states, but no wills in blood. That's right. So long as you're able, um, you can make changes to your will. Good to know. And then how would somebody contact you if they're interested in finding out more information or getting started with their own will and estate planning? As far as reaching out, just go to, I would say to go to freewill.com, check it out. Estate planning is super important. And if free will can help your community on this journey of self-love and protecting the people and causes that matter most, we'd be so honored to be part of that journey. And go through the will flow, go through the power of attorney flow. And again, if we can be helpful, it would be such a pleasure to be there for your community. Well, thank you, Allison, for joining us today and talking with us and sharing your own journey. I kind of picked today to do this because next week, actually, October 17th through the 23rd, is National Estate Planning Awareness Week. So that's the best time to either get started, I would assume, with planning something. And if you need to make any modifications or updates, that's also a good time would be to do that at now, right? So again, could you give your website one more time, please? Absolutely. It's freewill, F-R-E-E-W-I-L-L dot com. Thank you. As long as you speak my name, I shall live forever. Today, we are dedicating this episode to Melanie Darvin Strutler. Did I say that correctly? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Feel free to click. Thank I'm you bad to Melanie Darvin Strutler. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us today and for talking. I know it's a it's a tough subject, but I really do feel it's very much needed. So thank you very much. And I appreciate you being here. And I hope you come back sometime and we can talk a little bit more. That would be great. Thank you, Roberta. I appreciate you and your community. Thank you. Well, there you have it from our community to yours, a weekly installment of Living Hope, something we all need. Show that chronicles the weekly journey that so many are on. Trying to provide some hope, inspiration, and education along the way. And if you have somebody you know that's looking for any of that, we've got lots of resources. Hirschberg uh, Foundation is one we've had on several times. We'll give you one here locally in uh, Orange County. PANCAN, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. You can call them at 8772, the number PANCAN, or spell out PANCAN, P-A-N-C-A-N. That's 8772 P A N C A N if you need some help right away. And if you have a story you'd like to share or an idea you'd like us to explore, please contact us here at OC Talk Radio or reach out to Roberta, your social media and otherwise. Otherwise, we we'll look forward to seeing you here next week for more Living Hope. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.